What's up YouTube and welcome to another video. Um, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the reason why I stopped buying bulk books in Gaylords. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions about this over the past couple months and so I am answering that question today. The reason why I'm making this video is because I've gotten, I don't know, maybe a dozen questions in the past couple months asking if I sell uh, bulk books and if I buy Gaylords anymore. Uh, if you've been on the channel for a while or if you follow me on Instagram, you will remember that I go, or I was going rather, to Goodwill Outlets and buying bulk books. That is Gaylords of Books. Uh, Gaylord is simply a unit of measurement. It is a pallet size box that is three and a half to four feet high, and it's filled with books generally anywhere from like 700 to 1,000 books. Uh, and I did that actually several times. Uh, I would pick up six Gaylords at a time, once a week, every week, and it was very profitable. However, I no longer do that, and I'm going to give you the reasons why I no longer do that. Um, so here they are. Number one, when I started, they were uh, charging me eight cents per pound, and the Gaylords ranged anywhere from 500 to 650 pounds uh, per box, and I had to buy six boxes at a time. That was the rule. And so I was paying anywhere from 400 to $500. Um, I had to pay $300 for a dumpster uh, to get rid of the junk books. There are ways around that now. And if you look in the description below, I have a link to sell back your book to where you can sell them your duds and they will buy them uh, basically pennies on the dollar, but it can recoup some of that money for, for you. Uh, I was also paying $120 each week for a U-Haul in order to um, get those Gaylords home. So that was a huge expense. All in all, anywhere from like six to $800 per week to get all this stuff. Now, I was pulling $2,000 net profit after everything was said and done. Uh, and so that was like very lucrative, very profitable. The issue is that um, as I went week after week after week, they started charging me more, not by pound. They kept it at the seven or eight cents per pound. However, they uh, they started marking it up as more poundage. So like they weighed more. Uh, I'm getting the same amount of books, the same, same kind of books, the same general assorted uh, mess of books, but the boxes, the Gaylord boxes went from being 500 to 600 pounds to 700, 800, 900 pounds. And then the very last week that I went there, they were charging me based on 1,000 to 1,200 pound boxes, which is absolutely ludicrous because there's no way they weighed that much or, or something, something was off. Uh, either they were undercharging me in the beginning or they were overcharging me at the end. I don't know. So I kind of backed off a little bit. And then uh, I got word shortly after that, when they realized that I was slowing down, that uh, they hired their own scanners to come in. I'm assuming the reason that they had their own scanners come in is because they noticed that it was profitable. If I kept coming back week after week after week, buying these Gaylords of, of books uh, six at a time, and the price kept going up by a couple hundred dollars every single week, and I keep coming back, that showed them that there was profitability in these uh, huge boxes of books. And so they hired their own people. I can no longer buy Gaylords from my local Goodwill outlet. That's not to say that there aren't other avenues to where I could buy books. Um, there are websites that you can buy bulk books, but you have to buy them like uh, 12 or 24 Gaylords at a time, and they're going to charge you 10 cents per pound. And then you have to rent the, uh, not rent, you have to pay for the big rig truck that's going to bring that whole 53 foot uh, trailer of books to your home or place of business. That's another thing. That's another reason why I slowed down on the Gaylords of Books is because of the storage space. Um, at my house, we own five acres of property. We have a house, we have a small one car garage, and then we have two small sheds. And we were having to process all of our books and all the Gaylords outside in the open air, which is not bad for summer and fall time. But as it got closer to uh, late fall and then into winter, uh, it's just simply too cold to be able to do that. And so one thing I'm looking at, I plan to go back fully, I plan to go back. However, a couple things, uh, we need to have a dedicated warehouse workspace for this. Uh, I'm not going to go back into bulk books without a warehouse and without some sort of um, weather protection because it's simply just too cold, uh, you know, 20s at night and then 30s and 40s during the day. 
it'd be kind of ridiculous to be outside in those conditions. Uh, maybe I'm complaining. Maybe I'm too soft. I don't know. Uh, I just don't want to do that. Uh, another reason why I've scaled back a little bit on the books, I still buy books. Uh, just about every single Saturday, I go to my little honey hole and I buy books. But one of the reasons I scaled back just a touch is because here in Q4, for whatever reason, the book sales have slowed way down. And I'm thinking that maybe that's because Christmas time, um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, like all these things in Q4, people are buying uh, other items and they're not really buying books so much. Whereas in summertime, people buy books like crazy because, I don't know, they, they want to sit on the beach and read books, I guess, or something. Uh, but book sales have slowed way, way, way down. And so I shifted and adjusted my selling tactics and um, strategy back to shoes, which I am uh, I feel like I'm pretty proficient at. And so selling shoes very hard right now and making uh, quite seriously more money with shoes right now than I was making with books. So maybe I'll stay on this trajectory for a while until something shifts. You know, things change, things move back and forth all the time. And so you just have to be ready to adjust when things stop going your way. And then when they start going your way again, be ready to adjust again. Don't get mad, don't get upset, don't get uh, frustrated. Just understand that things happen and it ebbs and it flows and you just have to go with it. And the, the clearer you keep your mind and the um, more level-headed you stay, the easier it is to transition. So we transitioned maybe to not quite full-time books, but going really heavy at shoes, electronics, and hard goods that I'm buying from Goodwill. Um, and that is serving us very well right now. Um, yeah, guys, so that's it. Not selling bulk books. I am still cherry picking books from the bookstores and from the thrift stores. However, a lot of the thrift stores, like I said, they're hiring on their own scanners. They're opening up their own Amazon accounts because they realize there's money to be made. And I'm not mad about it. I'm not frustrated about it. I will overcome. I will find out other ways to make this money. I think uh, Amazon is still young in its uh, maturity. I think eBay, eBay's a little bit more mature. Uh, the shoe game is still young. There's not a lot of people selling shoes out there. There's not a lot of people selling books. I mean, there's a lot of people selling books, but in the grand scheme of things, with the amount of people that could be selling books, uh, it's not quite that many. It's not as many as you think. The maturity of e-commerce as a whole is still pretty young. There is a long way to go with all of this. So I hope that gives some encouragement to you, lets you know my strategy and what I'm working on, how I'm approaching things. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, be sure to drop them into the comments below or uh, DM me on Instagram and I will get back to you there. From here on out, if you guys want to stay tuned, you can check out some of the shoes that I picked up. I bought five or six pairs at the Goodwill today. Uh, kind of some bangers. We got some really good profitable shoes at Goodwill. So hang tight for those. And then after that, I will show you what has sold over the past uh, three or four days since my last video. And I'm telling you guys, you do not want to miss this. I had my best return on investment item that was non-book um, since I've started selling on the internet. Um, so you'll have to stay tuned after I show you what I bought at the thrift store just a few minutes ago. Uh, hang tight after that. And I will show you this item blew my mind. I could not believe that I sold these for the price that I did. So check those out. I'll throw four or five items that have been real heavy hitters that made me some good money this week. Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already subscribed, consider doing that if you like this kind of content. Thank you for listening to me talk for the past few minutes, and I will see you guys on the next video.